Welcome to Trader UK, the money management channel. I'm Adam Hill. Today, I'm gonna to take a look at the tax implications for beginner traders. This is something that is often forgotten and overlooked, and if you do overlook it, it can end up being costly in the form of fines and penalties from HMRC. So if you are a beginner trader, or you're new to trading, new to investing, follow this video through and make sure you understand exactly how to comply. Before we get going today, do me a huge favor and subscribe to the channel for more finance related content. From stock trading to premium bonds, I'll cover it all. And if you enjoy today's video, do me another huge favor and hit that thumbs up button. Now there is an ongoing debate at the moment about retail investors and how much influence they might be having on the market. One thing that we know for sure, the stock market has been opened up to millions more people through the introduction of free stock trading platforms like Robinhood and Trading212. Unfortunately, for these beginner investors, they often don't understand the tax implications that holding stock can bring. So that's exactly what we're gonna to cover today. I will just point out that the information in today's video is gonna be relevant for investors from the UK only. And if you are watching from somewhere else, make sure you do your research as the process and the law can differ depending on where you are tax resident. Investing in stocks can bring about two potential sources of income, both of which are treated separately. Firstly, you may start receiving dividend income from your investment, and that dividend income may need to be reported to HMRC. The way that you report this income is gonna depend entirely on how much dividend income you receive. Each individual has a 2,000 pound per year dividend allowance. So if you receive less than 2,000 pound per year, you do not necessarily need to inform HMRC. If you receive more than £2,000 but less than £10,000 per year, you can inform HMRC by phone and depending on your other sources of income, they will normally just adjust your tax code to account for this. In other words, they will tax your employment income a little bit more to account for those dividends. At this level of dividend income, you also have the option of including it on your self-assessment if you complete one. And if you are lucky enough to be receiving more than £10,000 per year in dividend income, first of all, congratulations, that's very impressive. Secondly, the only way for you to declare that income to HMRC is going to be via a self-assessment. So even if you haven't submitted one in the past, if you are not registered, you'll need to go to the HMRC website and get yourself signed up. How much tax you pay on your dividend income is gonna depend entirely on your personal circumstance and other sources of income, but the truth is most smaller investors won't actually end up paying any tax at all. First of all, you're gonna have your 12,500 pound per year personal allowance to look at. After that, if you're already utilizing that elsewhere against other sources of income, you also have a 2,000 pound per year dividend allowance. After this, you'll pay dividend tax in whichever tax bracket you belong to. That's 7.5% for basic rate taxpayers, 32.5% for higher rate taxpayers, and 38.1% for additional rate taxpayers. But remember, that's only for individuals who are already utilizing their personal allowance and their dividend allowance. The second potential source of income will come when you sell shares. If you sell shares that have increased in value since you purchased them, then you will be realizing a capital gain. And if you sell shares that have decreased in value since you purchased them, you will be realizing a capital loss. And it is important that you report both of these to HMRC. Even if you make a loss, by reporting this to HMRC now, you can carry that loss forward and offset it against any future gains. Luckily, the rules for reporting losses are actually a little bit more relaxed. You have four years from the end of the tax year that you made the loss in, or the year that you realized the loss when you sold the shares, to report this to HMRC. Whereas if you sell shares to realize a gain, then you'll need to inform HMRC at the latest by the 31st of January deadline that follows the end of the tax year that you made that gain in. And you can do that by informing them on your self-assessment. But if you don't submit a self-assessment tax return, there's also a real-time capital gains reporting service on the HMRC website. The tax rules for capital gains are different to those for dividends, and you'll be pleased to know that you have a separate £12,300 per year capital gains allowance to utilise. 
You can also offset any losses that you have realised in the same tax year and if you have reported losses to HMRC previously then those losses can be carried forward indefinitely and offset against any gains that you've made as well. After all of this, if you are still left with a gain, then you are going to be taxed at 10% for your basic rate taxpayers or at 20% for your higher rate and additional rate taxpayers. So there you have it, your UK tax obligations when investing in the stock market. Probably information that you didn't want to know, but it is very important that you do know this. It can end up costing you heavily in investigations, fines and penalties. So I recommend everybody stays on top of this. One final thing to mention is that if you hold your investments in an ISA, then the income that they generate, whether it's dividend income or capital gains, will be exempt from UK tax and will not have to be reported to HMRC. So if you do find that you are incurring a tax liability each year, this could be an option for you to research and explore. That is all for today guys, thank you for watching, let me know in the comments if you have any questions and as always I'll see you next time.